I want to change gears a little bit and talk about the actual um, Olympic Village because there's a lot of speculation about what goes on in the Olympic Village. You know, as a as a high school college kid, I thought that the best part about going to the Olympics would be the absolute sex fest that goes on in the Olympic Village. And obviously, you're in a beautiful relationship, so that doesn't apply to you. But as like just like the vibe of the Olympic Village, and of course, it's going to be different during COVID. What what was it like when you first walked in? What what surprised you? You know, what was kind of strange? What what, what was cool about it? What, what what were your overall thoughts about the Olympic Village now that you've went through the whole experience? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely from what we were told way way different than past years on so many levels. Um, I mean, number one, you're masked the entire time in the village. So conversation is a little bit more difficult. Um, when we walked in, I'm trying to think, we got there late at night. And so the real, the first experience was, you know, we were traveling all day and hadn't eaten, you know, all day. So, you know, we threw our things in the room and um, threw our things in the room and, uh, went straight to the dining hall, so didn't really see as much right away. But I couldn't believe how many athletes when I got there were like coming back from the gym, coming back from matches or events at, you know, at midnight. There was just so much going on, and like you know, you had people that were probably passed out waking up at 5 a.m. for an event somewhere pretty far off site, and then you had people coming back from matches, people training, um, eating at all different hours of the night. So I think just like the shape and size of all these different athletes that you would see on a daily mm -hmm. basis walking through was insane. Like I've never, you know, walking through like the Robin center at Richmond, obviously every athlete had like has a distinct look and you stand out on a college campus, wherever you are. This was insane. Cause it was everybody, every single person was just looked like they were in the most incredible shape of their lives. Um, and I, I couldn't believe how tall, and, um, a lot of the female athletes were. I'm assuming a lot of it was track, volleyball, and uh, and basketball. But there was also so many sports that you don't even realize that exist in the Olympics that were there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, it was like such a people watching scene in the gym and the cafeteria. It was just like holy crap! Like where do all these where the hell do all these people come from? And um, I mean, a lot of these people devote their entire lives to training to be ready for the Olympics, whereas, this, you know, our roundabout way here was a little bit different. So uh, the village was cool. Um, uh, I for, Also for me, like the gym was insane because you would see all different styles of training. Like you could see influence from different types of people or um, how each country kind of did differently, more specifically each sport. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm used to seeing in more of like a sports-based uh, higher level performance center in the U.S. And it was a lot different here. I mean, you'd see like people playing handball, like in the gym in one corner, you'd see like, um, like the uh, synchronized swimmers, like they had these mm -hmm. really cool like platforms that they would literally like balance upside down on so they could still practice their routine outside of the pool. Yeah. You'd see like judo, um, all different types of fighting and sparring going on. And these people like, I mean, you know, from doing Muay Thai now, I did Taekwondo up until I was like 13 or 14 years old and was a black belt. And like, I was so fat, chubby and slow back then. I thought I was good at what I was doing. These people moved so fast, like the kicks, and the punches were so insanely quick. It was unlike anything I've ever seen. That was really cool to see. And then, I mean, you know, then you'd see like basketball guys, volleyball, um, kind of doing their own style. A lot of people would like crush treadmill workouts. And then I'd look mm -hmm. over and I'd see Jose Batista crushing bicep curls and chest press every other day. Yeah. Um, uh, what, but did yeah, you I mean, ever get a chance to uh, talk to Jose Batista or have any interactions with him? I mean, it was really just small talk um, with him in the gym, and he was on the bus with us. He was on our flight. Um, I talked to Emilio, Boni Emilio Bonifacio a little bit more. Um, he's uh, another veteran big leaguer that was uh, 
with the DR. And I remember talking to him for a bit in the weight room. Um, also, like, Ramiro Pena with Mexico, who was the Yankees prospect and played in the big leagues with the Yankees, and I think a few other teams for a while. Um, but, yeah, Batista always had, like, a group of guys around him um, at all times. But, I mean, some of the guys on our team had prior relationships with him and knew him. Um, so they all <clears throat> they all spoke to him and, you know, all the other kind of big league veterans that – that were there but I mean yeah the village was just such a such a unique place again like like I said the interactions were different um I'm sure that the amount of uh could you, intercourse that could you uh, tell, we all have hurt oh go, sorry go <laughs> ahead you said intercourse you said intercourse so I don't want to stop you okay, now you stop now you stop I don't think that happened anywhere near to the extent of years prior um like I know you know it was nerve wracking to even allow someone else in your bedroom. It was nerve wracking enough to have your own teammate in your bedroom because you don't know who they came in contact that with that day. We were COVID tested every single day. And if you're positive, I mean, you're in quarantine in like a little shoebox room and it would be a real shame to have to sit there and be in Japan quarantining when the rest of your team is playing. Um, so I honestly, yeah, they'll, pro- they'll probably lock you up and, and let you out for the next Olympics. If you tested positive for COVID exactly. in Tokyo, they'd probably be like, w- w- sorry, dude, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll throw you in uh, a five pound dumbbell and a baseball and you can throw it against the wall and get ready for 2024. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised, but um, yeah, so it was, yeah, it was definitely different on that end. Like, I mean, I'm sure other countries were nervous even allowing someone else from another country in their room. Um, uh, with us specifically, we were uh, we we occupied like three or four floors higher up in one of the buildings, and to get to our floor, there was numerous levels of security that you had to go through and the elevators mm-hmm. only went to our first floor and then you had to go through security to get in. So we had to take like three flights of stairs up to the top floor every single time we came in. And if you were did not have the Israeli facial recognition, like you were not allowed even on our floor. So nobody from another, nobody from other countries could even come up um, anywhere near where we were staying. So it was a very oh, heightened level of security. I, like I said, I kept my interactions down, especially earlier on. Cause I mean, I was so nervous and, you know, with the injuries that I've been dealing with, I was, you know, didn't even know if there was, if I was going to be healthy enough to play and uh, perform and uh, play in the team. So I didn't want to do anything else to put myself at risk. So I really kept my interactions down. Um, you yeah. kind of met people from other countries. Con- Did you play in Cooperstown when you were younger? No, that was the one baseball tournament that I didn't do when I was younger. I did everything else like sports at the beach yeah. and, and the other random ones, but I never played in Cooperstown. Yeah, so um, it was actually kind of felt like a kid in that sense. Like the pin trading in Cooperstown is huge, and the pin trading in the Olympic Village was also a very big deal. So that was like mm-hmm. the extent of interaction that I had, especially earlier on, with um, athletes from other country and other countries. And it would kind of lead to some small talk here and there. But um, you know, you everybody said pin, kinda, pin training, pin training, like you trading pin. Pin trading, like uh, I literally have ours right here, like like pins. Oh, so like you would trade court court. pins uh, with other players from other countries, other countries. Or, or yeah, that's dope. So you were every country was supposed to bring pins there, <clears throat> and it was like a big part of you know the experience. Like I have a, I have like a display case with a lot of the stuff that I had signed by the guys, and like on there I have like a Tokyo twenty twenty towel with all the different pins that I traded for. So that was really like most of my interaction and like a little bit here and there with people in the weight room. Um, that kind of, that kind of yeah. sounds like, that kind of sounds like burning man a little bit because I, I know I'm burning man. I've never been, but you're supposed to bring things to trade with other people. And from really? what I understand, you don't, you, you, there's no money system. If you want something, you trade it. So you make something that, you're good at or you buy a bunch of things before so pins for example you could bring a bunch of israeli pins for team israel and maybe if a guy was sitting on a stoop playing a guitar you would give him a pin and he would play a song or maybe that guy's thing to trade would be playing a song and and he'd want some food from another group of people so he'd be he'd say i'll play this song and the guitar belt it out a little bit and that would be the mode of trading so it, it sounds almost like the Olympic village had, uh, some burning man vibes. 
Is, it, is Burning Man a music festival? Yeah, it's a, it's a festival. I believe it's art, music, a display of all different types of artistic abilities, crafts, things like that. I'm I'm not entirely sure because I've never been. Um, but I'm 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 down to check it out if you want to do like uh, 2024. We could go straight from the Olympics to Burning Man, or, or maybe we could even do Burning Man if it's in the same place. We could just bring it to the Olympic <laughs> Olympic Village. They could just keep the Olympic Village up, and then we'll just do a Burning Man in it after. 